You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to another fantastic episode of Ask Drone You and you're watching the news episode. Here, as always with me, is the famous, the infamous, the well-known European bandit, that is Haya Costello. Welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you for the very lively introduction, uh, Paul. Glad to be here. How are you today? <laughs> oh, doing great, doing great. Um, actually very interested in, uh, in what we have going on this week in drone news as it looks like we're mostly focused this week on how drones have kind of reached this pivotal point where they've saved 228 lives. They are literally solving problems in the real world with Notre Dame and there are new drones coming to fruition and it looks like DJI is doubling down on the Mavic Pro. So as we get started in this news week, what do you have for us? What's, what's up first? Yeah, let's start real quick with um, trying to get more comments into the FAA. If you remember last uh, in the last show we spoke about this, that's uh, before new rules come into effect, the FAA has a time frame in which people can submit their comments. And especially for flying at night and flying over people or over crowds, we only had 84 comments submitted as of last week, uh, right before DJI made a push and a number of other websites uh, made a push to get more comments as well. Right now, if you uh, go to that uh, website, regulations.gov, you'll see that we're at 913 comments submitted, which uh, is a heck of a lot more than uh, than we had just about a week ago. So I think that's a very positive uh, development that uh, I wanted to make sure that we would cover today. No, it is a great development. I will say I spent multiple hours on my comment as well, uh, and I got it in very last minute. And I can understand, you know, with the NPRM, there are so many things inside of that NPRM. It's really hard to comment on each provision that they're trying to implement. But I will say, I was very enlightened by the fact that many people were saying, you know, you should allow flights over moving cars no matter what. You should not be so strict on flights over moving people when you have full-size helicopters flying 50, 50 yeah. yards over people on the beach all the time. Um, so it's it would be really counterintuitive, it seems like, for the FAA to in, instill such strict standards when there's a clear double standard. So I, th I think it's uh, awesome that there's comments and I hope the FAA listens and I hope that uh, we get some new airways to open up the skies for more drone pilots. Totally agree with you there. I mean, it's it's funny that you mentioned it. We're here in uh, South Florida and uh, we try to go to the beach pretty much every day. And every time I'm on the beach, you see helicopters flying very low and very close to the beach. So in terms of uh, danger and risk, I mean, yeah, helicopters uh, are definitely a big part of that as well. I feel like the biggest danger zone for drone pilots is literally the beach because you can get a helicopter, a tourist helicopter out of nowhere that just is on you. And we've seen those videos on YouTube. So we know it's yeah. definitely a real problem. So moving on from you know the good news that drone pilots are actually trying to have a voice in the industry, what do you have for us for the first story? Yeah, the first one is a Mavic 2 firmware update that was released by DJI. Now, the last release they had was back in January, if you remember, where they introduced waypoints uh, to the DJI Mavic 2, which is actually a, a highly requested feature. This time, uh, they have some smaller fixes as well as a new feature that allows a dual remote controller mode, meaning that two people can have their hands on the control and fly a Mavic. Now, it's kind of interesting that they would add this feature because as far as I would understand, um, I think this is most interesting for, let's say, uh, filmmakers using drones where one is flying and the other one is focused on getting the, the right shots. It's a feature that you would kind of expect to come to a Phantom before it would come to a Mavic 2. So the fact that DJI just introduced this for the Mavic 2 kind of makes you wonder as to what DJI's vision is for the uh, Mavic 2 drone lineup. And of course as well, uh, what's gonna happen with the DJI Phantom lineup. And I'm sure as most of you will know, most of those models for the Phantom 4 are currently out of production and everybody's kind of wondering where DJI is going with this. So I thought this was an interesting uh, development for sure. 
So are you saying that you're foreshadowing that DJI is going to double down on the Mavic and try to beef up the Mavic as much as possible and maybe not launch a, a new Phantom? Because the, the rumor mill is saying that, you know, we are not going to see another new Phantom. And it's really interesting yeah. because one of the key points that I'd like to kind of get across on this show is if you're a serious drone pilot, there's a lot that you cannot do with a Mavic 2 Pro. Um, as far as heavy winds, as far as subject tracking, as far as taking off in certain environments, as far as flying from boats and hand catching, you know, it's just so much easier with a Phantom. So are you foreshadowing that the Mavic 2 Pro is essentially going to get beefed up in time to replace the Phantom? Because I think that that would be a... I, I think that would actually provide a, a huge opportunity for other drone manufacturers to come in and say, hey, if we can produce a global shutter drone with all these features and dual pilots, that you may have a new way into the industry. Yeah, I mean, uh, and that's a very good point. I mean, the DJI Mavic 2 is a very capable platform, and we know it can carry heavier payloads. I mean, just look at the uh, the accessories that they uh, introduced for the enterprise version of the DJI Mavic 2. So we know it's a very capable platform. Um, it wouldn't surprise me at all if they beef that up and make it even a more capable drone going forward. Whether that would mean that uh, the Phantom lineup is in danger of being continued uh, is a whole different story, I think. Uh, I would agree with you that the, the Phantom models are more professional and we've seen uh, a lot of people use the hand catching method as well, which uh, would be hard to do with a Mavic 2. So I don't know what it means for the Phantom lineup necessarily at this point. I mean, there's a lot of questions that uh, remain unanswered there. However, I do see the opportunity for the Mavic 2 drone to be further improved and further developed. And I think that's what DJI is looking to, uh, to do at this point for sure. Again, I really hope that's not the case. Also, I hope that's not the case for pilot perspective because one thing that I constantly hear from pilots is they just bring their Inspires to shoots sometimes and still use a Mavic, but they only bring their Inspire for the look of being a professional because the client perception is like, oh, okay, yeah. this guy's flying a bigger bird. He has more experience. He knows what he's doing. And I think that that's really interesting. So. But um, either way, whatever happens, it shall be interesting to see how, uh, th I mean, this year is definitely the year of change up in the drone industry. It's the year of shake up. It's the year of potentially another competitor coming in and offering significant value. So it should be interesting to see how this year progresses for drones. But in other news, it looks like, you know, the French have been dealing with a lot of issues and Quasimodo lost his home, unfortunately, this week. But it seems like drones may be helping to provide a solution to rebuild Notre Dame and Quasimodo's home. What do you have for us? Yeah, this is uh, about the inferno that took place uh, on Monday in, uh, in Paris, in the Notre Dame uh, Cathedral. Um, the story came out pretty quickly that drones played a crucial role in fighting this fire. And um, actually on Tuesday or Wednesday of this week, uh, the story changed to where they said, it was only 15 or 30 minutes away from a total collapse uh, had those drones not been able to be used and also to provide strategic information to the firefighters, specifically uh, focus on two things. One, the direction in which the fire was spreading, and two, uh, how to position the fire hoses so strategically that they could actually uh, create a water wall between the moving fire and the two bell towers that make up the face or the front of that uh, historic cathedral. And luckily, they were able, of course, to, to uh, fight off the fire and uh, prevent those two big towers from, uh, from catching fire and possibly collapsing. Um, if you may know that in those towers, there are massive bells. I think the biggest one weighs around 13 tons, and that's set up in a wooden structure. So if that were to catch fire and those bells come down, those towers would probably have collapsed. So the drones played a crucial role. Uh, what was also very nice to see is that one of those drones was actually flown by a female drone pilot, which is not something we see all that often, but it's something that uh, we very much support from Drone uh, DJ and of course from Drone U as well. In the early reports, it was mentioned that these drones had thermal cameras attached to them. Now, we know that one of the drones was the Matrice 210, which, of course, with Zenmuse X-T2 uh, would have included a thermal camera. The other one uh, was initially reported to be a DJI Mavic Pro. Uh, however, if it had a thermal camera, um, it might have been the DJI Mavic 2 Enterprise Jewel that was recently launched. However, we haven't seen any thermal imagery from the Inferno at the Notre Dame at all. So, at this point, we're not quite sure which drone was used 
Uh, the Verge had an article about it. They said that uh, it was indeed a DJI Mavic Pro and that no thermal imagery uh, had been shown. Whether that's uh, the case, we don't know quite sure yet at this point. So we'll update the article uh, once that information does become available. But it's cool to see that drones played such a crucial role in saving a cathedral that's over 850 years old. I mean, you have like the historic aspect of it and then the modern equipment that was used to uh, save this catastrophe from, uh, from getting a lot worse. You know, it's really interesting looking at these pictures because we do see the female pilot flying some sort of Mavic 2, whether it's Enterprise Dual or Enterprise or Mavic 2 Pro. But she's surrounded by people. It looks like they're making a decision now. Going into the other photo where it does look like a Seedens remote and a crystal sky, I do not yeah. see any evidence of a thermal camera on that drone. It actually looks like it's a Z30 camera because you can see the extreme controls for zoom on his screen. And you can also see how the screen is not showcasing a really high amount of, um, what is it called, of, uh, of resolution. So mm -hmm. that being said, it's really interesting that, you know, okay, maybe with the zoom, but it looks like the first responders again, you know, are utilizing a smaller Mavic drone. And I actually have an upcoming interview coming out where one of the largest uh, construction companies in the country has completely moved away from the Matrice series and they're just using Mavic 2 Enterprise duels. So... It's really yeah. interesting, but either way, no matter what drone they're using, the fact that drones are here saving a cathedral that's 850 years old and it literally could have saved uh, further damage, again, showcases the absolute necessity for drones in public safety. So it's one of those things where, you know, it doesn't matter how it's used in some cases with public safety. In other cases like search and rescue, obviously it's very important how it's used. But this is just a great example of how drones are literally protecting the things that we cherish every day. Yeah, one, one interesting point to, uh, to point out, actually, is that these drones were not owned by the fire department or police department of Paris. Apparently, they were borrowed by the ministries of culture and the interior. So these drones came from elsewhere and were deployed in helping to fight this fire. And I would hope that after this experience that more people realize that drones should make up a part of the assortment of tools that are used by fire departments. Very interesting. Very interesting. Well, in other drone news this week, it looks like there may be a new aircraft to the market. What do you have, Hayat? Yeah, this is the uh, X-Dynamics Evolve, which we first saw at uh, AUVSI last year. Uh, they had a booth set up there. It's a full carbon fiber drone with a top speed of 60 miles per hour. So it's a very fast drone as well. Comes with a, uh, a three axis stabilized gimbal setup, but it also has an interchangeable camera. So you can actually mount different cameras to this drone. It's priced at two and a half thousand dollars, which is quite expensive, kind of puts it in between, let's say a Phantom 4 and an Inspire. However, if you were to dress up the Phantom, including the accessories that come with this drone, you would approach the same two and half thousand dollar price mark so if you add in things like additional batteries and backpack that come in, uh, standard with this drone your phantom would become more expensive as well then again uh, two and a half thousand bucks for a drone is, uh, is quite expensive this drone does not have any obstacle avoidance so you don't get the same capability in that sense that you would get with a, a dji phantom but it's good to see that of course that we have another competitor coming with a uh, very or what at least what seems to be a very capable drone to the market and also a very interesting remote control if you look at the images in our article on drone dj you'll see that the drone controller has two screens so you have one flip up screen that shows you basically the map and then there's another screen that shows you additional controls that's positioned in between your control sticks so in terms of design and materials used the carbon fiber um, and the design of the controller it's pretty creative and pretty innovative as, as well i would say and we haven't flown this drone yet we're trying to get our hands on this as well so that we have some uh, some first impressions to share it's going to be interesting to see if this drone can actually uh, put a competition uh, for dji couldn't agree more um and actually as we're talking about drones i wanted to make a quick point that I actually misquoted some of the statistics on the Parrot drone that we talked about last week. Um, it is not a one inch sensor, it's a one over 2.4 inch sensor, which is a little bit smaller than the one over two thirds sensor, which is a sensor you're talking about in this particular drone. 
Going back to the X Dynamics Evolve drone, Haya, have you seen any additional camera payloads? Because this camera payload that they're touting is really nothing new to the market. In fact, I, I would say that we have seen this exact camera payload since the Inspire 1. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's uh, 4K 30 frames per second. So it's decent quality for sure, but um, it's not the latest and greatest at this point. I haven't seen any other payloads as of yet, but I can imagine that uh, if somebody would be interested in buying this drone, they would be looking to get better image quality and video footage as well, and therefore uh, would be looking for another camera to use on this drone. And like I said, we're trying to get our hands on one, and we'll ask the company as well to see what other options are currently available for this drone. Awesome. Well, we look forward to that update, Haya, but we also look forward to more news. News that drones, again, are saving lives. But what's interesting about this next story is not necessarily the lives that were saved, but rather how lives were saved. What do you have for us in your, uh, in your now home country of Florida? I mean, vacation stay in Florida. Yeah, this may actually be one of the most interesting stories of today. Uh, in the past, we've reported about people being saved by drones, and we've seen plenty of uh, police forces and fire departments using a drone to help find and save somebody. What sets this story apart is the fact that uh, the Collier County Sheriff Office deployed their drone operations units, and they laid a grid system over the area that was supposed to be searched, fired up six drones at once and found this missing person very, very quickly. The fact that they've deployed six drones at once is the key point in this story. And I hope that other fire departments and police departments around the country, uh, around the world actually, uh, will take notice and think about setting up a drones operation unit specifically to help in search and rescue missions. And don't just use one drone. I mean, uh, drones are getting more and more affordable by the day. You can use Mavics, you can use um, Phantoms, you can use multiple kinds of drones. But the fact that you're deploying multiple drones at once in a search and rescue, of course, um, allows you to cover a much larger territory uh, much faster. So in my mind, this is, a, this is a great story. By the way, the 77-year-old person who was actually suffering from both health and mental issues was indeed found they had paramedics on standby. Uh, the guy was, other than the existing or pre-existing conditions, was uh, safe and sound. And again, yeah, the drones just played a crucial role in, uh, in bringing this man home safely. Wow, that is wow. an awesome story. And I love how the count continues to go up on how drones are saving lives. It's something that I really love hearing about, Haya, because it just goes to show that drones are a tool that can really be of service to humanity as a whole. And on that bombshell, that is going to end it for our news show today. Hi, I just want to say thank you again for coming on to the show to give us this week's news. Thank you very much. Uh, as always, a pleasure to be here. And I'm looking forward to our next show, although I won't be in sunny Florida at that point anymore. We'll be back in New York. Maybe you should come to sunny New Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> There's an idea. <laughs> it's going to be a nice 80 degrees today here. So oh, Yeah, that's nice. That's much better than I think it's like in the 60s in New York still, so... But anyway, we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. Sounds good. Hi. Well, thanks again for coming on the show. And for everyone listening, thanks again for your continued support. Thanks for those YouTube comments. I'm trying to get um, back to those as much as I possibly can and really give you guys as much feedback and engagement as possible. For everyone who listens on iTunes, Stitcher, and Spotify, thanks again for the continued support. Please leave us a review. Like, Just take 30 seconds right now. Leave us a review. It really helps us out. But that's going to do it for us today. My name is Paul, his name is Haya, and you're watching another news episode brought to you by Drone DJ and Ask Drone You.